shielded from the east by the mountains of the Eiffel Dwarf, yet free from the darkness that enshrouded them, lay Ithilien, the frontier fiefdom of Gondor. It was a fair country of climbing woods and swift falling streams, open to the southern airs and the dewy winds that float in from the great sea. In the second age of Middle-earth, Ithilien was calm and prosperous, safeguarded by the fortress city of Minas Ithil, which kept watch over the deserted realms of Mordor. But as the centuries passed and one age turned to the next, Gondor's resolve faltered. The forts of the Anduin River were abandoned, and the garrisons of Isengard and the Misty Mountains withdrawn. Shadows returned to Mordor, and even Minas Ithil could not withstand them. In the last decades of the Watchful Peace, Orcs and Haradrim were seen across Ithilien in even greater numbers. By the time Mount Doom erupted once more, the few farms and villages that remained in the fiefdom were abandoned, the last of its peoples fleeing for the safety of Asgiliath or Minas Tirith. Yet even with its greatest fortress turned into a bastion of evil, and Gondor's armies increasingly distant, the servants of Mordor were never safe in Ithilien. Hidden in the old woods and secret gardens were those who remained where all others had fled. This group kept watch over the fields and forests, giving the great enemy ample cause to fear the rangers of Ithilien. Like their distant cousins to the north, the rangers of the south traced their heritage to the Dúnedain. Tall, pale-faced men endowed with a seemingly natural aptitude for archery, concealment, and forest craft. Expert scouts and hunters, these rangers patrolled the Ithilien frontier, harrying orcs or other enemies that roamed between the borders of Mordor and the great river Anduin. In this role, they served as an elite unit of Gondor, expected to operate independently on their own initiative. In battle, they struck with uncanny precision only to melt back into the wilderness, relying on speed, stealth, and surprise. Patient and cautious, they chose the ground on which to engage the enemy with great care, only striking when every element was in their favor. Once the enemy was aware of their presence, they quickly split into numerous small groups, never allowing their opponents to gauge their true strength or becoming a tempting target for massed arrow fire. Through this method of guerrilla warfare, rangers were capable of engaging and defeating enemy formations many times their size and strength. With Athelion overrun by servants and spies of the enemy, the rangers relied on a network of secret paths and hideouts. The most famous of these was Henneth Anun, a great waterfall concealing a series of caves and tunnels. This refuge was the group's primary headquarters, allowing rangers to rest and rearm between patrols. Drawn from both the descendants of Athelion's settlers and proven veterans from across the whole of Gondor, the strict requirements of the rangers meant the force remained small, numbering no more than a few companies. Each man eschewed the traditional plate armor of Gondor in favor of a light cloak, hoods, and masks. These were typically green and brown, allowing their wearer to blend into his surroundings. While rivaling even the elves in their proficiency with the longbow, many rangers were also experts in the use of swords and spears. During the War of the Ring, the Ithilien rangers fell under the command of Faramir, son of the last steward of Gondor. As the forces of Mordor pushed deeper into Middle-earth, the rangers ambushed numerous enemy columns before being pulled back to defend Osgiliath, the last major stronghold on the route to Minas Tirith. When this city too fell, the rangers withdrew again to the capital before participating in the Battle of Minas Tirith. Following the defeat of the Dark Lord Sauron and the collapse of his armies, peace returned to Ithilien along with its once scattered people. It was perhaps the greatest victory of the rangers that in the fourth age of Middle-earth, they were no longer needed. With the return of Ithilien to Gondor, the group was reformed, becoming the White Company, the personal guard to Faramir, named Prince of the Land he had worked so hard to defend. The beacons are lit! Our Twitch channel calls for aid!
Join us tonight at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, where the Templin Institute will be playing some multiplayer games of Battle for Middle-Earth 2. You'll find it over at twitch.tv slash Institute, but if you're watching this in the fourth age after the time of men has come crashing down, you can find the archive stream on our secondary channel, the Templin Archives.